So MediaTek just launched its new Dimensity 9300 chipset which will be stuffed inside of some of the biggest and most interesting smartphones of the next few months. And to celebrate I decided to knock back some delicious whiskey and then bang on it you fine folk about why this dinky wee bit of silicon, no bigger than the average pork scratching, is so effing marvellous. But proceed with caution because this wee chip is so fantastically arousing that every last drop of your various bodily fluids will simultaneously explode from every orifice, instantly turning you into a supernatural sex fountain. You'll be drier than the Sahara in mere milliseconds. So Uncle Spurt, what's so ruddy special about this Dimensity chipset I hear you explete at your smartphone screen or whatever other device you're watching this extraordinarily excellent video on? Well, hold your horses, I'm about to get to that bit, and frankly you should brace yourself anyway because things are about to get rather explicit. Even bits of you that you never realised could get all pointy will be sticking out like miniature cutlasses for tiny pirates. Techspert Weekly! So if you can remember a couple of weeks back, Qualcomm launched its fresh new Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, which is a proper clever bit of tech, make no mistake. However, while the 8 Gen 3 has just the one ultra core, the Dimensity 9300 has four of the buggers. How you like that, shit, Qualcomm? And there's no pathetic weakling small cores here on the Dimensity 9300. Every single core is either big or ultra. Even the smallest core in this thing is so hard it could beat up your dad with a single finger. All killer no filler bitch. And that Antutu score, well it's only over 2 million boy howdy. If that doesn't deserve some dangerously fast thigh rubbing I really don't know what does. And what about that fresh new ARM Immortalus G720 GPU? That certainly didn't take a few takes to get right. Immortalus. Immortalus? Well it's only a 12 core beast which improves the peak game and performance and the ray tracing abilities by 46%. Woof! Those shading effects are going to blow your tits off. Internet and the Dimensity 9300 can theoretically hit peak sub 6 5G speeds of up to 7 gigabytes per second. Well that's fast enough to download over 3000 hours of Ultra HD tentacle hentai action in less time than it takes to say oh my bloody god I really need a spare pair of pants. And up to 4K Ultra HD phone screens are supported running at up to 120Hz, so all of that deeply illegal animated action will never have looked so disgustingly brilliant. With all of this excitement I'm clenched so tight that my bowels could crush a bag of diamonds into posh powder. And I haven't even bloody mentioned the second gen semantic analysis ISP. Frankly I might have to leave that to a different video before I expire from being too aroused. Anyway that's a whole bunch of highly exciting geeky nerdy stats but what can the Dimensity 9300 actually do? Well it would actually be quicker to list what it can't do. So no the Dimensity 9300 sadly can't finish that werewolf romance novel you've been working on that's been sat on Google Drive completely untouched for the past decade and a half. Face it fella that Twilight shite went out of date in about 2007 anyway. Just delete the f***ing thing. And as clever as the Dimensity 9300 is, it also can't pleasure your mum. No worries kiddies, just leave that to your uncle Spurt. That is, unless your mum gets all hot at the thought of 7 billion LLM parameters running at 20 tokens per second, in which case the 9300 is going to make her scream. And when can we expect the very first Dimensity 9300 smartphone to actually be launched? After all, the first Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 blower was unveiled by Xiaomi just about 48 hours after Qualcomm announced the chip. No buggering about whatsoever. Well, good news, you can expect the first smartphone with this clever wee bugger stuffed inside of it to be announced within mere days. In fact, there's a bloody good chance that it was actually announced just as I started to edit this video, thus making the words coming out of my mouth horrifically out of date before they even hit your ears. God, I f***ing love tech. In fact, just in case, I'm going to pause right here and let my future self insert some sort of text overlay or graphic or something or other, just in case that has indeed happened. So anyway, kiddies, that right there in an extremely perky wee nutshell is the fresh new MediaTek Dimensity 9300. But just when you think you're completely spent, well, make sure you come back again next week because on that episode, your Uncle Spurt will be out in LA properly testing out all the smarty pants bollocks that the 9300 is capable of. Preferably while sipping several super strength cocktails in some sort of fancy swanky hotel pool bar. 
Advance warning, I'll almost certainly be wearing shorts, so there's a severe chance of explicit leg hair action. But more on all of that at the end of the show in the customary next week segment. And now it's time for the part of the show that will make all of your pointy bits go decidedly unpointy again. It's viewer comments. Viewer comments. <laughs> so let's start this week with Turpentime, who says, You're the best Dawn review show on planet web. No, oh, and you're the best Dawn comments person whose comment I've read out so far today. Cheers, mate. Appreciate it. Ithrostic says, Will the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 be able to help Sunderland win a football match? It might be good, but it's not that bloody good. I mean, Christ, if we can't even beat a 10-man Swansea. Bag of arse, a lot of it. So frankly, I'm just going to dedicate all my weekends to full-on drinking rather than drinking with 90 minutes of obligatory football. Edward Puddock says, Well, after three pints of Aspel cider and a double JD honey and cork, this is a perfect video for a dumb geek to watch. Still trying to decide what phone to get to replace my beloved Pixel 3a. I wasn't too sure about that Honey Jack Daniels before I tried it, but I gotta say, after a few beers, a couple of those slips down very nicely indeed. Uh, Wood3399 says, Good to see someone still using the Pixel 2. That's from last week's show. I only upgraded from my Pixel 2 a few months ago because I dropped it and it got the tiniest crack in the corner which killed the screen completely. Ugh. I'm pretty happy with my new Pixel 7a but I do miss the fingerprint scanner on the back because it was way more accurate. Yeah man, those rear fingerprint sensors were so much better than the in-display efforts. Bring back the R scanners! And it's heartening to hear from a few Pixel users who still use those proper old school blowers from back in the day. I do wonder if anyone's actually still using one of the old Nexus phones. Definitely hit us up in the comments below. Your dinky little 3.5 inch screen. Uh, Kuro Shinko says, Spy X Family is a great manga and anime. Yeah, hard agree. It just doesn't matter how down in the dumps I am. It just never fails to make me happy. Especially that massive dapper dog with the bow tie. That thing is absolutely adorable. Uh, RMJ says, I swear if my man ever had to go into chemo and wear glasses, he would be the best Jeb T sausage freak look like. What on earth is a Jeb T sausage freak, dare I ask? Ah, uh, Jesus Christ, what, the <laughs> what is that? Jeb Tiberius sausage freak is the titular main protagonist, villain and anti-hero of Jeb's jobs. Yeah, I'm absolutely none the wiser here. Occupation, formerly technical support. Well, that's exactly what I used to do as well. Skills include computer gaming, sarcasm, scheming. I mean, again, fairly accurate, apart from the being good at computer games bit. Uh, Etta Crisp says, does the Google Pixel 8 or the 8 Pro do that screen share thing? If by screen share you mean sharing casting to a TV, then yes, it does do that. Sorry, I've had quite a few beverages now, so I can't really do serious questions good. Not that I normally do serious questions good, but today, even less gooder. Sorry, my grammatical skills seem to have dropped to the level of most other YouTubers. Just took half a bottle of scotch. Oh no, sorry. Sorry again, I think I just clicked in my brain that you were actually talking about the seamless integration stuff that Qualcomm introduced on the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3, which I was banging on about in the previous episode, right? I know the Pixel 8s can't do that because they don't use a Snapdragon chipset, they use a Tensor. But while they can't do the seamless integration shenanigans, having that Tensor means that the Pixel phones can cook an egg in just two to three minutes. Lol. Just a wee bit of Tensor shade there. And yeah, we've got several comments about the Honor Magic 6 Pro, which was, of course, the subject of all that hot chat in last week's episode. Uh, Mr. Watermelon says, I hope the new Honor Magic 6 or the 6 Pro will have a 6 to 6.1 inch screen. I mean, somewhat tragically, they won't, mate, guaranteed. I don't want to, you know, blow up your dreams and then piss all over the burning remains, but yeah, there's absolutely no chance they're going to be that compact. And believe me, I'm right there weeping alongside you. Marty Jones says, currently using the Magic 5 Pro, absolutely love it, pictures from the camera are incredible, battery does me well over a full day and that 8 Gen 2 handles everything I throw at it. It'll be interesting to see what the 6 Pro will be like. Yeah, the Magic 5 Pro was a proper cracking Wii flagship, that's for sure. My only real boggle with it was the Magic UI software, which was a bit poo. Stuart Moore says, another fragile rectangle that is totally different to all the other fragile rectangles. You're even more cynical than me, mate. You should become a tech YouTuber. Abdul says, where do you get your wallpapers, bro? I've been asking you this question for like eternity. 
Oh, I'm done, my friend. You clearly haven't watched this far into a Texpert Weekly before, but don't you worry, got you sorted. Jingle it! wall.alphacoders.com wall.alphacoders.com That's where my wallpapers come from. wall.alphacoders.com Bunnix Miraculous says, Can you do a review of the Samsung Galaxy S20 fan edition? I'd like to see how it is now versus 2020. Unfortunately, I don't think I have the S20 FE anymore. I'm pretty sure Samsung nicked that back a long while ago. What I do have, though, is a literal pile of shame, a poor bunch of smartphones that haven't even been yanked out of the box yet. Not to mention a Pixel 8 Pro and a whopping great f***ing iPhone 15 Pro Max that I'm still yet to review. So yeah, sorry mate, but the chances of me doing a video review of a three-year-old smartphone is about as likely as James Corden winning a Nobel Prize for being the funniest c*** alive. Robert Simmons says, what do you think of the Nubia Z50S Pro? Well, I've got to say, on paper, it certainly looks tastier than a deep-fried kebab with extra lashings of garlic sauce. I'd certainly be interested in testing out their custom 35mm camera, but frankly the sheer number of Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 and Dimensity 9300 phones that are going to be hitting the stores in the next few months just absolutely fills me with dread, so I don't want to be asking in for more samples. Mythic Sun says, I have a rule with platform games, which is I don't mind if it's old and I don't mind if it's just the right level of difficulty, see Crash Bandicoot, but if it's sadistically difficult and seriously lacking in checkpoints, see Gex. I'll either draw the line right there or I'll risk angering all of Gen X by using save states on an emulator as a substitute for the missing in-game checkpoints. See, I even struggled with Crash Bandicoot back in the day. I thought that was really bloody hard, especially those sodden levels where you're running towards the screen. So the first time you see a pit is when the little orange bastard is halfway down it already. Oh, that's just mean. But yes, thank God for save game states on emulators these days, because back in the day, like playing on the ZX Spectrum, the likes of R-Type, for instance, I don't think I even made it past level two on that thing, let alone finished the bugger. And it's like the good old saves, I actually finished R-Type completely on the Evercade in a single day. And admittedly, it took about three and a half thousand f***ing saves, but I did it. Dave Failoni says, just looked at the price of the new top spec MacBook Pro 16 inch, 7,300 quid. When I think about how many bottles of whiskey you could buy for that, it just make me weep. I'm just really praying that that Snapdragon X Elite shenanigans doesn't turn out to be a massive pile of toss so I can finally get away from MacBooks, get onto a good bit of Adobe instead, and I'll finally be free of that overpriced Apple cockbaggery. Uh, running out of time, just better make it the last couple of comments. Uh, so Lazy Marshmallow Bear says, Manga suggestion, Sakamoto Days. Let's check this wee bugger out. The story revolves around Taro Sakamoto, a retired legendary hitman who has settled into a quiet and mundane life as a family man. However, his peaceful life is disrupted when former enemies and colleagues from his hitman days come seeking revenge. Sounds strangely familiar. It's kind of funny though, because even though this retired hitman story whose past comes back to haunt him, it's been absolutely done to death. Obviously, the likes of John Wick and History of Violence and Ghost Dog and such forth. But I, honestly, I just cannot get enough of it. And it looks like a lot of it, if not all of it, is on Shonen Jump as well. So I'll be smashing through a good chunk of that on the 11-hour plane flight to LA next week. Cheers for the recommendation. And last up, Bry says, still working through these videos on two months now. When you say love you at the videos, it makes me all warm inside. And when you don't say it, I get upset. Oh, mate. Well, here's a special one just for you to make your bowels all bubbly. Love you. And an enormous thanks to everyone who commented last week. Great to read through those, as always. Please do smash your comments down below, and we'll try and get away to as many of those as possible next week. Hey, I'll speak in next week. Next week, next week, what the f*** is next week? This is about next week. Next week, my mission is to fly to LA and drink the entire state dry, all while testing out this wee jobby right here in a variety of devices to see what it's really capable of. And I'm holding it back to in front, aren't I? Now, most of these demos are happening on the Friday, which means that depending on how absolutely smashed out my brains I get, I probably won't be finished with all the shooting and editing until Friday evening, maybe Saturday morning. So next week's episode is probably going to be a wee bit tardy. Apologies in advance. But it will happen at some point. I can more or less guarantee that as long as my heart doesn't explode in my chest or anything. So stay tuned for that. Let us know what you think of the Domensity 9300. That versus the Snapdragon. Ooh, which one really greases your pull? In the meantime, please do book, subscribe, ding that notifications bell, etc, 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 and have yourselves a ruddy, wonderful weekend. Cheers, everyone. Love you.